this is uh, my first lecture uh, on selecting the best uh, regression model. Uh, we are under the multiple uh, linear uh, regression setup and uh, you know that you know, uh, in, in multiple linear regression, uh, the number of regressor variables uh, is uh, more than one. And uh, in most of the practical problems, what happen is that you know uh, the number of regressors is uh, uh, very large, and uh, having the large number of uh, regressor variables, uh, uh, we may wonder you know whether uh, some of them uh, can be uh, uh, some of them are irrelevant and uh, can be removed uh, from the uh, regression equation. Well, so the basic idea you know behind this uh, finding the best uh, regression model is that uh, uh, we need to find uh, find an appropriate uh, subset of regressors uh, that can explain the variability in uh, response variable well. And uh, finding this uh, subset of uh, regressor variable, uh, this uh, problem is called you know vari variable selection problem. Well, uh, let me uh, explain the thing in in detail. There are two, uh, there are several algorithms to to solve this problem, and uh, those algorithms can be uh, you know divided into uh, two, I mean that can be classified into two classes basically. One approach is called uh, all possible regression approach and the uh, other one is uh, called sequential selection. Well, so first I will be talking about uh, uh, all possible regression. all possible regression say here you know we need to consider all regression equations involving say uh, zero regressors well so if uh, if there are k minus 1 is the total number of regressors uh, in the multiple linear regression model then uh, you know the number of model having zero regressors is k minus 1 c 0 and the model is basically uh, y equal to beta naught plus epsilon. Okay. So, we, we will also consider I mean of course, uh, the regression equations uh, or models involving one regressor. And the number of models, uh, number of such models is k minus 1, c 1, two, two regressors, k minus 1, c 2, uh, regression models are there involving two regressor variables. Well, similarly, we go up to k minus 1 regressors. So, number of models involving k minus 1 regressors is 1. So, total we have 2 to the power of 
k minus 1 regression models and uh, you know these uh, models these equations are evaluated according to some suitable criteria. The first one is called R square. This is the coefficient of uh, multiple determination or coefficient of determination and uh, then we will be talking about the criteria adjusted R square and then MS residual and the finally, uh, I mean uh, we will evaluate the equations uh, based on the criteria Mallow's statistic and uh, this one is uh, denoted by CP. Okay. And uh, this is you know uh, uh, one approach that is you know all possible regression and the other approach is called uh, sequential selection. So, I uh, will be talking about uh, this sequel, uh, sequential selection later on and there are uh, three uh, algorithms of this type, those are called forward selection backward elimination and uh, the stepwise selection. Okay, so, uh, uh, today uh, we will be talking about uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, all possible regression and how to uh, evaluate uh, so many I mean 2 to the power of k minus 1 uh, regression equation uh, e based on these criteria. Well, now if uh, the number of regressors is 4, so, usually we denote uh, the number of regressors by k minus 1. So, if k minus 1 is equal to 4, then k basically you know k denotes uh, the number of uh, k denotes the number of uh, unknown parameters in the model. Well, so if, if there are k minus 1 regressors that means there will be um, k minus 1 regression uh, coefficients and there is another unknown parameter which is uh, the intercept. So, uh, total you will have k unknown parameters. Well, so if uh, there are 4 regressors in the problem, then there are to the power of 4 sorry 2 to the power of 4 which is equal to 16 possible regression equations and uh, uh, let me uh, just uh, i have uh, those 16s you know uh, regression equation. So, here uh, I am considering the, a problem with uh, 
with four regressor variable. So, this is the model which without any I mean with no regressor variable. So, number of such model is uh, 4 c 0 which is equal to 1. Now, these are the models involving one regressor variable. So, this, this one is involving x 1, the second equation is uh, involving x 2, x 3 and x 4. So, these are the four regression models involving one regressor variable and then uh, we have you know six uh, regression model involving uh, two regress uh, two uh, regressor variables so this one is involving x1 x2 x1 x3 x1 x4 x2 x3 x2 x4 x3 x4 uh, and then next uh, we have regression model involving three regressor variables. So, there are 4 c 3 that is equal to 4 such uh, uh, models regression model. So, this one is involving x 1 x 2 x 3 like that and uh, this is basically the full model uh, this involves all the four uh, regressor variables. So, there are 4 c 4 that means uh, one such uh, model. Okay. So, when the when the number of regressors variable is 4, uh, we, we have you know 16 possible regressor uh, regression models and we need uh, to evaluate them with respect to some criteria and uh, see the complexity of this problem this approach you know if if you have a problem with uh, say k minus 1 equal to 10 that means the number of regressors is equal to 10 then uh, then there are uh, you know 2 to the power of 10 which is equal to 1 0 2 4 uh, possible regression equations so clearly you know the number of equations or the number of regression models uh, that need to be uh, fitted, uh, you know, that uh, increases rapidly uh, with with the number of regressor variables. Well, so uh, I mean, but but still, you know, uh, since uh, uh, in in most of the practical uh, problems, uh, the number of regressor variable could be uh, like uh, twenty to thirty. So, but of course, you can you can use uh, a computer to uh, to fit all possible to do the power of 20 models also there is no problem. Well, so next I uh, will be talking about uh, the criteria, the first criteria I, I mentioned that criteria for evaluating subset regression model. Well, so we need to uh, evaluate those uh, those subset models and the first criteria to evaluate them is uh, I mean one criteria is coefficient of of multiple determination. And uh, we denote this one by r square. So, before also I told uh, I mentioned about this r square uh, and uh, we used to call it 
like uh, coefficient of determination and hence uh, since we are talking about you know multiple linear regression model here uh, we call it uh, uh, multiple uh, coefficient of uh, multiple determination so we denote this by rp square well so this let rp square denote the coefficient of multiple determination for a subset regression model with p minus 1 regressors and intercept theta naught. Well, so uh, by R p square, you know this p basically stands for the number of unknown parameters in the model. So, since there are uh, p minus 1 regressors, uh, there will be p minus 1 uh, coefficient and the intercept beta naught. So, the total number of unknown parameters is equal to p and, uh, and uh, we denote the corresponding uh, coefficient of multiple determination by r p square. Okay. So, this r p square is equal to S S regression P by S S T, okay, which can uh, be written as 1 minus S S residual P by S S T. Right. So, what is this SS uh, regression P and SS residual P? They denote regression SS and residual S S for subset model with P minus 1 regressors. Okay. And uh, so basically the R P square is uh, associated uh, with the model when there are uh, p minus 1 regressors in the model uh, and the rp square is a parameter which measures the proportion of variability in the response variable uh, which is explained by the uh, regression model involving p minus 1 regressors. Well, so uh, it is uh, not I mean like you know uh, r, r square uh, we know that r square increases as uh, yeah I mean one observation you can make you know that uh, that r this r p square this r p square it increases as p increases 
because you look at the definition of R p square, R p square is equal to uh, 1 minus S s residual p by S s t and uh, we know that uh, S s residual this decreases this decreases as p increases so from here you know you can you can uh, uh, easily uh, observe that observe that that rp square increases as as p increases and uh, and this is maximum when p equal to k, because you know uh, p, p equal to k means uh, p minus 1 is equal to uh, k minus 1. Uh, that means, uh, uh, we are talking about uh, the full model uh, and uh, since uh, we can have you know in the problem we have uh, maximum k minus 1 a regressor variable and uh, the SS residual uh, it decreases as as the number of uh, regressor variables increases. So, maximum number of regressor variable possible is k minus 1. So, when this p is equal to k uh, SS res residual has the minimum value and hence the hence uh, R p square uh, uh, has you know uh, will have the uh, maximum value. Okay. So, what we do here is that uh, we, we compute this the value of R p square. So, basically first we compute R 1 square. This R 1 square is uh, is the case when the number of regressors is equal to 0. So, R 1 square means uh, this will have, so P equal to 1, that means P minus 1 equal to 0. So, the number of regressors in the model is equal to 0, that is the model, if you consider the model Y equal to beta naught plus epsilon. So, this is the model, you know, uh, involving no regressor variable and uh, it is not difficult to observe you know um, prove that uh, when you have this model with no regressor variable then the coefficient of multiple determination is going to be equal to 0. Okay. Next uh, we will be computing R 2 square given a set of data. Okay. So, R 2 square you know uh, basically here p minus 1. So, this is p. So, p minus 1 is equal to 1. Uh, so, this one is R 2 square is associated with the model uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon. So, this is R 2 square is uh, for the model with one regressor. Okay. Uh, to illustrate all these things, first I uh, will consider one example. Well, so this is uh, quite famous uh, uh, data, this is called the hauled cement data. Here we have one regress, uh, one response variable y and uh, we have four regressor variable x 1, x 2, x 3 and uh, x 4 and we have uh, 13 observations uh, corresponds to uh, the response variable and the regressor variables. Well, 
now you know uh, here uh, we have uh, four regressor variables and uh, you may think that uh, all the four regressor variables are uh, not significant uh, to explain the variability uh, in y some of them might be you know irrelevant and whether that uh, the whether uh, some variables can be uh, removed from the model uh, without affecting the model uh, predictive power well so for that you know we need to we need to select the regressor variables which regressor variables are best to explain the variability in the response variable y so that is the whole purpose of this uh, lecture uh, let me you know uh, let me explain the um, all possible regression situation here using this example uh, so there are four uh, there are four uh, regressor variables so these are the possible models these are the possible models with one regressor these are the possible models with two regressors and uh, these are the possible models with three regressor variables and this is the model with four regressor variables. Now what we need to do is that we need to fit uh, each of them and uh, once you have the fitted equation or fitted model for uh, for this type of you know for uh, involving x1 uh, you, you can compute the ss residual ss total and from there you can compute the coefficient of multiple determination uh, let me you know uh, fit at least uh, one at least one uh, equation uh, for example you know i'll i'll fit this equation Okay, so, I have uh, this data, I will try to fit a model between uh, model of the form y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon, right. Okay. So, I will try to fit a model of the form y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon for that uh, you know that whole cement data. Uh, I am not going into the detail of, so this looks like a simple linear regression model. So, you know how to find beta naught hat. So, you consider only the uh, data corresponds to the response variable and the data corresponds to the first regressor variable x 1 and uh, you know how to how to fit this model fitting this model means you know you have to find uh, the least square estimate estimate of beta naught and beta 1 hat so the fitted equation you can check that the fitted equation is y hat equal to 81.5 plus 1.87 x 1. So, this is the fitted equation. So, once you have the fitted equation, uh, you can compute the uh, residuals E i and once you have you no know, E 1, E 2 up to E 13, you can compute the S s residual. So, S s residual is going to be E i square from 1 to 13. Uh, you you just check you know uh, this is equal to 1 to 6 5 well so you have the fitted value you have the original observation so from there you can get e which is equal to y minus y hat so we know all these things and the ss total is equal to for this data it is 2 7 15.8 and hence the SS regression 
this is equal to 1450. So, I am just trying to uh, give you some idea you know given a problem with 4 regressors or 5 regressors how to how to apply this uh, 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 all possible regression uh, approach. Okay. Now, we can have the ANOVA table for this ANOVA table. So, the ANOVA table for this problem I mean uh, for this model is you know you write the source of variation degree of freedom SS ms and the f statistic variation due to the regression model total variation the part remained unexplained residual the total degree total uh, degree of freedom here is equal to 12 because there are 13 observations now the ss residual you know uh, here you have two unknown parameters so basically you will be getting two uh, normal equations uh, and that means there are there are two constraint there are two constraint on the on on the residuals. So, the residual degree of freedom uh, is equal to 11 sorry is equal to 13 minus 2 because of the two unknown parameters in the model. So, the SS residual has degree of freedom 11 and the regression uh, degree of freedom is equal to 1 and we have the SS regression value is uh, 1450.1. Residual is twelve six five, and the total is two seven one five point eight, right? And the MS value is fourteen five zero point one, and the MS value here is, you know, this is one one. 5.1 and the a value is equal to 12.6 well so what i want to say here is that once you so uh, this anova table is associated with the model y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus epsilon. Similarly, you have to uh, fit the other four models uh, involving one regressor variable that means uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 2 x 2 plus epsilon. So, for that model you will get another ANOVA table. Similarly, you fit y equal to beta naught plus beta 3 x 3 plus epsilon, you will get another ANOVA table y equal to beta naught plus beta 4 x 4 plus epsilon, you will have the ANOVA table associated with that model. So, basically you know there are uh, there will be uh, uh, 16 uh, possible regression models and for each of them you will have you have to fit the model, you have to find out the associated ANOVA table for your convenience. Of course, you can use you know computer or some software package like uh, SAS or S plus to, uh, to do this job. And then once you have you know uh, all this uh, uh, ANOVA tables or the SS residual value, SS T value for every model you can uh, you can compute the coefficient of multiple determinations. So, here the coefficient of multiple determination r square and 
this is 2 here p is equal to 2 because there are two unknown parameters and here r square is equal to r2 square is equal to ss regression which is equal to 1 4 5 0 by 1 2 6 5 sorry by SST which is equal to 2715 this is equal to 53.4 percent. So, here you know this this model is not that good because because it explain uh, the model involving the regressor variable x 1 only. Uh, this explains only uh, 53 percent of the total variability uh, in the response variable. Well, uh, so what I want to uh, say now that look at this table here now. We have computed the coefficient of multiple determination for this model that is 53.4. Similarly, you uh, fit this model, uh, this model is also involving one regressor variable and that is x 2. Uh, you find out the corresponding ANOVA table and then, uh, then you compute uh, r square value. Okay? So, this is the r square coefficient of determination uh, associated with this model and similarly, uh, you do for all the models, here also you do for all the models. Here you can see that you know, here, uh, this model particularly it is a good one, uh, this one is involving x 1 and x 2 and the coefficient of multiple determination here is 97.9 percent. That means, which is maximum in this class. So, among the among the two variable uh, among the regression uh, equations involving uh, two variables, uh, this one is best. Uh, this is uh, that means y equal to beta naught plus beta one x one plus beta two x two plus epsilon, because you know almost ninety eight percent of the total variability in the response variable has been explained by this model. Well, so similarly, you have to you know this is really a hectic job you know here you have to uh, estimate uh, all the models involving three regressors and you compute the um, uh, r square value for all the models and this is the full model which involves all the four regressors and the uh, coefficient of determination is 98.2. Well, now what we want to do is that we want to draw a graph. the number of regressor variable p or basically p is the number of unknown parameters in the model along the x axis and uh, and maximum r p square along the y axis. Okay. Uh, I hope you know you have observed that the higher the value of uh, r p square, higher the value of r p square, 
better the model is or the higher value of R p square indicates better fit. fit. Okay. So, what I want to mean is that uh, uh, out of all these six model uh, which involve uh, two regressor variable, this one is the best. Out of all these four uh, regressor vari uh, four models involving one regressor variable, this one is the best because this has a, a maximum. This has the max. Uh, this model has the maximum coefficient of determination. Well, so what we do uh, in this graph is that uh, here. all possible models with p minus 1 regressors are evaluated using the um, criteria you know co coefficient of multiple determination and the one giving the greatest R p square is tabulated. Okay. So, let me take this is my p equal to 1, p equal to 2, P3, P4, P5. Now, when P equal to 1, that means there is uh, only one unknown in the model. That means P equal to 1 means P minus 1 equal to 0. That, that means there is no regressor in the model. So, this is the model and the Rp square value is equal to 0. Well, so here the Rp square maximum Rp square is equal to 0. Now, for p equal to 2, p equal to 2 means the number of regressors in the model is equal to 1. So, out of these four models, the maximum Rp uh, maximum is 67.5. So, we will we'll tabulate this one 67.5. Okay, suppose, you know this is 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, okay, maybe 20 and then 40, 60, 80, 100. Okay. So, 67.5, you can keep it here, p equal to 3, p equal to 3 means the number of regressors in the model is 2 and the maximum one is 97.9. Okay. So, we will plot this one 97.9. So, for 3 uh, it is almost here. Now, for p equal to 4 that means the number of regressors in the model is equal to 3 and the maximum is 98.2. So, for 4 it is 90. 8.2 and for p equal to 5 means there are uh, 4 regressors in the model and the coefficient of determination value is 98.2 again. So, we will plot 98.2 here. Okay.
Well, so, so what it suggests is that the algorithm is like that, you know, you start with with one regressor and add regressors to the model up to the point where an additional variable provides only a small increase in r c square. So, based on this topping criteria, uh, you can this small increase means there is no uh, you know specific uh, value of this small what what do you, what do you mean by a small increase so either you know th th this model with uh, two variable it has uh, coefficient of determination value 97.9 which is uh, of close to 98% of the variability is explained by this two regressor variable now if you go for the three variable model uh, then this one is the best or also this one is also the uh, having the same multiple linear regression model. So, so uh, clearly you know you do not need to go for the you do not need to go for the four uh, variable model either you choose uh, the three variable model which is you know uh, beta 1 uh, y equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 plus beta 3 x 3 either you go for this model or you go for this model and according to the uh, coefficient of multiple determination criteria, this one is also not bad, you know, uh, this is a model with, uh, with uh, two regressors. Well, so this, uh, this is how we, uh, we evaluate the uh, different possible, uh, basically all possible models. Uh, using some criteria. So, we talked about one criteria that is the coefficient of multiple determination and uh, next uh, we will move for uh, the MS residual criteria. Okay. Residual mean square. Well, so what we know is that SS residual P by P I mean you know this is the uh, SS residual uh, for the model which for the model with P minus 1 regressors okay? when K minus 1 is the total number of regressor variables. Uh, we know that P this one decreases as the number of regressor variable increases. And here uh, we are talking about MS residual which is equal to SS residual P, uh, let me denote it by P also, MS residual P by N minus P. N minus P is the uh, degree of freedom uh, for the associated model, error degree of or residual degree of freedom for the associated model. Okay. And here one thing, uh, you know, uh, I want to mention that, you know, for SS residual uh, decreases as P increases, but this is not true for MS residual. 
I mean uh, MS residual may increase with P. Okay? So, the reason uh, behind this one is that uh, what I want to say here, uh, let me let me write uh, MS residual P which is equal to SS residual P by N minus P and also let me write MS residual P plus 1 which is equal to SS residual P plus 1 by N minus P minus 1. Okay. Uh, we know that SS residual P is greater than or equal to SS residual P plus 1 because SS residual decreases as P increases. But the same thing is not true for MS residual. Here, uh, this could be this could be larger than the MS residual P. Uh, the reason is this, you know, the increase in MS residual P occurs, I mean uh, this this may be I mean larger, uh, this occurs when the reduction in SS residual P for adding a regressor to the model is not sufficient to compensate the loss of one degree of freedom in denominator. Of course, I mean what I want to say here is that you know this one is of course smaller than this one, but if you uh, add an irrelevant uh, regressor in the model, this will decrease, but the reduction here for adding one more regressor in the model, the reduction in SS residual is if it is not sufficient to compensate you know one degree of freedom loss here then only it increases so if you uh, if the newly added uh, regressor variable is not relevant for the response variable or not relevant for the model then then only you know uh, the reduction in ss residual uh, for adding this irrelevant uh, irrelevant uh, regressor to the model is not sufficient to compensate the one degree of freedom loss in the model. The, and then only MS, MS residual uh, increases. Well, so uh, we learn how to how to evaluate you know uh, all possible models uh, using the uh, MS residual criteria in the uh, next class. Mm, well, so we will we'll continue this, uh, this criteria MS residual in the next class. Thank you for your attention.